So first of all, I'm just going to give a really small introduction about Nahnu and thank you Dr. Nabil and uh, University of BAU and Leeds for the seminar. Uh, as Dr. Nabil mentioned, Nahnu is a youth-led uh, NGO founded in 2009. Our main objective is uh, creating a more inclusive society. Right now we work on, on this objective through three main uh, points heritage and craftsmanship, public and green spaces, and good governance. Now, what is cultural heritage, at least for us? Cultural heritage is the expression of a community or a group of people. It can be in anything, in architecture, craft, art, uh, songs. It can be basically tangible, intangible, etc. And it is not politically or geographically defined. And this is really important uh, always to to remember. Now, why is cultural heritage important? Basically, cultural heritage is the common ground, is the only ground that can uh, merge all the society and that can act as base to the society. It is resilient and adapted to its context right now in Lebanon, if you're speaking, especially because it's a combination and compilation of uh, several hundreds and thousands of years of evolution and trials and error. And most importantly, uh, it has a unique economical, touristic, and cultural value, which I'm going to speak about right now, especially in the Lebanese context right now, and how cultural heritage can help us in our current situation, and uh, its basic importance to the youth. Even though I'm an architect, I'm going to talk mainly about cultural heritage in uh, the nature, natural cultural heritage and uh, the crafts and art. Uh, so, youth and heritage, typically it is a really controversial, I would say, uh, topic. From our uh, point of view in Nahnu, and we can say from our observations that in general, younger generation are becoming more and more interested in heritage. Uh, the idea that everything that is westernized and globalized is perfect and is, is shiny, it's, it is being slowly, it is changing slowly. And we are seeing this through the volunteering and etc. in all our projects and the engagement of the youth. The most important part in order to support this is basically transforming the cultural heritage from a museum item, I would say, to an everyday life item, an item that can be used and that can change and evolve. Eventually, our cultural heritage, as I said before, is a compilation of thousands and hundreds of years of evolution. Why, why are we going to stop it right now from evolving and just put it in a museum or put it in uh, in a box and preserve it as it is now. Why don't we keep working on it and uh, evolving? In order to do so, I am going to talk about two projects, just uh, basically going to talk about them. The full studies are on our website. I'm going to share the, the website afterward. First of all, the Kraye uh, Rural Tourism. Kraye is a small town in South near Saida. It doesn't have any remarkable uh, landmarks or strategic uh, location or anything like this. But we worked on developing a strategy to develop the economy and to prevent the mainly youth of the town from moving into Saida. So uh, the project was youth led as most of our uh, projects. <clears throat> it was a mapping of all the elements uh, and powerful, I would say, uh, elements of the town. Part of them were uh, nature related and natural heritage is really common and is really important in, in Lebanon. We also have some elements of uh, architectural, uh, architectural heritage and more than, more than this, we have the intangible heritage, especially the culinary, uh, culinary heritage, which we are really famous in, in Lebanon, especially our, our food is really known. And this is an important part to focus on for, for later. I will explain in a little bit. 
the, the project basically, as I said, was youth-led uh, with the support of an urban planner and architect. We mapped the entire, the entire area, created a strategy based on the cultural heritage, on the natural and, uh, and architectural heritage, and to develop the economy mainly of this town. Now, why the economy? First of all, right now in Lebanon, we are in a, an economical collapse. So this is important to uh, reintegrate the cultural heritage in the economical cycle. This economical cycle, uh, when once the cultural heritage is integrated in it, it can be really powerful and can help us because most probably, and most of our uh, crafts, I would say, and uh, culinary habits that I'm right now uh, talking mainly about, doesn't need raw material, doesn't need import. We already have the know-how and they are somehow unique. So these, these can be really added value to us, to our economy. And by supporting them, we are supporting the, the youth in general. Why? Because every single time that we support cultural heritage or a craftsman or a culinary, culinary enterprise, etc., we are supporting the packaging company. We are supporting the shipping company. We are supporting the marketing company, etc. Why are these important? Supporting them will protect our cultural heritage because cultural heritage will have an importance to everyone. And this is important not to specify cultural heritage only with experts and architects and archaeologists, etc. The cultural heritage was, was created by the common and the common must be reintegrated in it and it must have uh, a connection with it, especially a, an economical one, this will help preserving it on the long term. Now, as I, I, as I, I was saying, the woman delights, how, for example, help to uh, let the youth learn the know-how of the Lebanese cuisine and to market uh, them. Right now in Krai, there's a small startup to promote this and to uh, try and export the homemade, if I want to say, uh, culinary, culinary uh, stuff. Another project that I'm going to talk about is the Burj Hamoud uh, craftsman mapping. Burj Hamoud, for those who doesn't know, Burj Hamoud is, is a small suburban uh, town, I, I would say, uh, formerly a refugee camp. Very well known for the craft in it and for the handy people uh, in it. Unfortunately, the Lebanese government doesn't support these kind of crafts and they don't, we don't even have a law to protect them or even to identify what is a craftsman. So how are we going to protect what we don't know what, who, who it is? So the, pro the idea was, again, a youth-led mapping to map these craftsmen and integrate their data by digitizing them into an online uh, online map that will be published on our website in about one week or so. Uh, it's like a small publicity to these uh, craftsmen. While doing this project, in general, the youth were really engaged. Some of them had the, the, the chance to experience uh, doing some crafts, etc. This led them to be more engaged in the project, a project that spent almost one year, and they were all of them volunteers, and led them to be more more connected to this to this heritage. Heritage uh, became an item of everyday life, an item that they could see how it is how it is done, how it is shaped, how it is evolving. Not an item that they can only see through the glass of a museum. And again, this is really important in order to engage younger generation and to preserve the cultural heritage. Let it evolve, let the youth uh, shape it. This is really, really important. This is, these are also some pictures of the project that I'm talking about. And finally, I would also like to say there's two Arabic uh, or Arabian examples that are really good the Moroccan and Tunisian example in terms of craftsmanship. By doing uh, cross, uh, cross projects between the government, the NGOs, and some international, uh, international corporations, 
they manage Morocco specifically manage from 2018 to 2019 to increase heritage export, heritage crafts export, 89%, which is a really huge number. And again, in terms like this uh, in Lebanon, it can be really helpful. We, we do have the same capabilities as Morocco in general. We just need the will to act, uh, to act upon this. Again, some of the pictures that I'm, uh, of the project that I'm referring to. I won't be taking much, much long, longer. Uh, these are just the basic and general ideas of, uh, of the projects. In case uh, anyone wants to go deeper in them, he, of course, he can contact me or you can find all our social media platform with our entire archive of, uh, of research and projects uh, published, published on them. Thank you again, and I hope that I wasn't really, it wasn't really a long presentation.